Okay, somebody must have heard me screaming like a girl in his office and come. Um, yes, I would investigate a noise like that too. I swear, I think he's got no hormones. There's never any girls around him. Or maybe he freaks them out. Maybe he just... Never mind. Thinking fast, I grabbed his tiny, slippery body, wrapped both hands around him, and tripped across the room into the closet. Forget the materia. My life and dignity was at stake here. The instant I closed the closet from the inside, the door flew open. I panicked, buried myself under what appeared to be a mound of clothing. I was so not going to turn the light on and find out, man. Kicked over a broom, which did not land on anything that would make it make a noise, thank goodness, and sat still. The little tree frog tickled my palms as he struggled to get out. I tightened my grip. He groped. Shut up, shut up, shut up! Hello? Aw, oh, crud, it was Alina. I thought I heard... Pause. Maybe not. This looks like Hojo's materia. I wonder what it's doing in here. I could hear the shrug in her voice. I should take it back. No, Reno, you can't have it. But... No, Reno. I screamed obscenities in my head. No, no, no! Thief's rule number one. Never return to the scene of the crime. Especially when it was ashy. And blizzardy. Sephiroth queried. Once I was certain those two were gone, I kicked open the door, caught the broom handle, set it upright, then watched dumbly as it toppled over again. Oh well. I don't think he was fond of brooms anyway. I mean, someone might get the idea that his hair was a- never mind. So, I shoved the door closed, scraped aside the wood splinters, and crept slowly to the door. For clarification, this is the entrance door, not the closet door. If I was going back to the closet, I probably had- forget it. I opened my hand after closing the door and looked at Sephiroth. He continued to glare at me, eyes bulging, the pupils dilated. The Masamunes cut my stool into even smaller pieces. As adorable as he was as a tree frog, I knew that unless I turned him back into... whatever the heck he was before, I would get blamed for a sudden and inexplicable death slash disappearance slash what have you. I need the materia, I explained, to change you back. So if you can be patient and behave yourself, I will... <sighs> go back into that creepy lab and get it, okay? To the passerby? I had gone nuts. He placed a front foot on my thumb and eyed me warily. His throat pulsed once, letting out a chirp that reminded me of evening frogs in Gongaga. Taking this to mean he was relenting and agreeing to possible further torment, I grinned at him, lifted my hand, and deposited him on my head. Wiggling, he chirped and croaked once, clinging to the crown of my skull. He seemed to get the idea, though, and burrowed deeper, hiding himself from the casual observer. It felt really weird, and probably looked weirder. Bright silver tree frog with practically neon green eyes nestled cozily in my hair. He also had sticky fingers. Really sticky fingers, as a matter of fact. Little slimy bugger. There was no way I could go back into that laboratory, though, without help. Remember Thief's Rule Number One? There's also a Thief's Rule Number Two. In case of violation of Thief's Rule Number One, be sure to return to the scene of the crime with backup. This, of course, constituted two problems. One. Who was going to be dumb enough to go into Hojo's laboratory? Most people were way too smart to do that. I mean, come on, think about it. Who knows what else he's working on in there? Mutant catbirds? Flying fish that can use Ultima spells? More mutant killer plants that mess up laboratories? Two, who would believe me? I mean, here I am, talking to a silver tree frog, insisting that it's our very own General Sephiroth, and that I accidentally turned him into a frog, and that Alina stole the materia I used and put it back where it came from. Well... No one with any pride would believe me, much less help me. So that left one person. Cloud. I brightened at the thought and patted the hair surrounding the frog encouragingly. Guess what, bud, I said, directing my voice upward. I figured out who we can use to save you from an untimely froggy death. Cloud. Right. What's his answer? You do remember Cloud, right? Silence. Short, so palely transparent with absurdly spiky blonde hair and a really quiet and shy demeanor. A pause. He seemed apprehensive. He can save you, Sefi. Well, technically, I am going to save you. I started walking, trying to act casual, ignoring the weird looks I was still getting from passerby. Yep, Zack had lost it, it looked like. But he can watch my six while I go digging around for the materia. Hojo probably has it buried somewhere now. I felt his sticky toes pull on a strand of hair. Really hard! I bit back an involuntary yelp and balled my hands into fists. It didn't take a genius to figure out that Sephiroth was growing increasingly distrustful of me. Don't worry, was my reassurance. He chirped. 
Without wasting another second, I picked up speed until I was practically jogging, searching every square inch of the soldier floor for the chocobo imposter. The briefing room, the materia room, this room, that room, every room was checked and rechecked. Certain he wasn't on this floor, I went to the floor where the cafeteria and started hunting there. No luck. Sephiroth hopped onto my shoulder and gave me a death glare. I could just barely see him in my peripheral vision if I didn't turn my head. His bright green eyes looked dangerous, almost as though he was imagining running that sword through me. I couldn't blame him. All that prestige and power and grace stuffed into a sticky amphibian whose greatest power was the ability to stick to walls. Actually, that's not such a bad power. Someone I didn't recognize stopped me. He pointed to my shoulder. Frog? He queried. I had to think quickly, so I pulled the best thing I could out of thin air. I made a croaking noise and coughed really loudly. Everyone in the hallway turned and stared. Stared. I'm telling you, if every one of those stares had been daggers, I would have... Forget it. Yup, I gasped. In my throat. He blinked, seemingly bewildered. I had succeeded in utterly confusing him. Shoulder. Shoulder? Oh. Where? <clears throat> I coughed again and looked at my shoulder. The right one. As in, the opposite of where the frog really was. Then I coughed for real, accidentally inhaling a glob of spit. A really <clears throat> big glob of spit, mind you. Freaking huge. In fact, I think I'm gonna drown in it. Other shoulder, Zack. Wait, he knows my name? By the time I looked, Sephiroth was gone. I felt him sticking to the back of my neck, secured between my spine and my turtleneck. When the guy I don't recognize walked around behind me and looked, I struggled not to chuckle before choking once and straightening. Do you know where Cloud is? Now my throat really did hurt. Darn those imaginary frogs. The guy I don't recognize looked at me. Cloud who? Now I'll probably have warts or something. No, no, focus. Wait, he spoke to me? Asked me a question? Oh, that's right. I have to answer. Cloud Strife. He's an infantryman. The mist cleared. Oh, yeah, I know who you mean. He's out by the fountain. At least, that's where he said he was going. When I gave him an inquisitive look, he shrugged. I work with him sometimes, but I only really know him by his last name. He needs to talk more. And he left. I snagged the frog and smiled at him. Thanks, I told him. That was a weird experience, I tell ya. His pupils turned into slits. Someone stared at me. I stared right back. What, you've never seen a guy talking to his pet frog before? What's wrong with you people? This is a normal occurrence! Yeah, I totally bailed after that one. Sure enough, outside near the fountain, I discovered Cloud, perched on the fountain, staring between his knees at the ground. That's weird. Normally, while he's on duty, he's so perky, even if he never sounds like it. Alrighty, then. Why did he look like he got caught with his hand in a cookie jar? Yo, Spiky! His head snapped up, his arms went around like a windmill, and he pitched. Whoops! A long time ago, Angeal made a point of telling me to never, ever, ever startle someone when they're sitting next to a water source. Today, I forgot. And he fell backwards, into dirty Midgar city water, and drowned. Or would have if I hadn't come running over, yanked him out, and faceplant. Gee, Zach, you're just winning epically at everything today, aren't you? Cloudy? Yes, I occasionally use that word, but only because Sephiroth accidentally referred to him as Cloudy on a day when it really was cloudy outside. Ha! <laughs> that was funny. You know, I should tell you guys a story sometime. What? Cloud did a faceplant? Oh, yeah, about that. Enormous dinner plate eyes blinked at me. His spikes were still standing. What the freaking heck? Did he use magical glue on them or something? Or gel? Sheesh, that's not normal, I'm telling you. Oh, hi, Zack. He looked okay. Except for the cut where his upper teeth had punched through the skin of his lower lip. Now he looked like somebody had drawn on him with a red felt pen. What's up? He noticed a thin trickle of blood, grimaced, and wiped it away. Better. Problem. I told him what happened. Really fast. Result? If I had taken one step forward, his gigantic eyes would have swallowed me whole and dragged me down into a vast, empty abyss of... Well, emptiness. Say what? Deep breath. I need your help turning our general back into a human being. Cloud looked around blankly. Where is he? What did you turn him into? I grabbed Sephiroth, cradled him with both hands, and showed him to the skinny blonde. Those eyes got even bigger. Is that possible? As he looked at the frog curiously. The frog, who was quickly becoming a living petri dish, grasped my finger with both front paws and croaked a greeting. Cloud leaned forward until the tip of his nose was less than an inch from Sephiroth's snout. The frog blinked at him. The infantryman sighed, long and deep. 
for such a tiny frame, he had a big lung capacity. So, he's a frog now, he announced quietly. No duh, Captain Obvious. What do you need me to do, and when? I told him my plan. That's about when his eyes got their biggest, and he came up with a lame excuse about patrolling. Well, little buddy, if you needed to patrol, why didn't you do that instead of sitting on a fountain and moping? My stomach growled and ruined the moment.